I don't know how he does it. Well, actually, yes, I do. He's Ringo. That's why. I was going to say, I don't know how he always gets these amazing lineups on these albums, but he's Ringo freaking star, man. Come on. Hi, guys. Welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. We are back with Mr. Ringo Star. Once again, it's been a while since we've done a Ringo track, and I promised uh, one of the commenters, I think a couple weeks ago, that I would do a Ringo track. Because uh, we did Year 16 not too long ago, probably like a couple months, I guess. That's not a long time ago to me. Um, but we're going to be doing two tracks off of the album. I think it's just called Ringo. Um, they are both written technically by him and George. The second one isn't credited to George, but he helped him write it. This one is a co written uh track which is photograph and then the second one is um it don't come easy which was a non-album single that came out i think in 71 it was his first single to come out after the beatles broke up and um photograph was also written i think around the same time but it's got a different lineup um we'll talk about the lineup afterwards but i think the first one has nicky hopkins on it on piano right and then george on guitar let me just make sure. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, George on the 12 string acoustic. Bobby Keys, Nicky Hopkins, Klaus. Like, come on, man. And Jim Keltner. I didn't even see him. And Jack Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Damn, he gets everybody, bro. All right, I'm sorry. Let's go. Um, if you're new here, I've done a ton of Beatle, a ton of Beatles stuff. Uh, there should be playlists and stuff linked in the description or up there somewhere if I can get it to work. Um, and there's also. A about four full albums for the Beatles on my Patreon. Fair enough, right? Okay. Here we go. First up, Photograph by Ringo Starr. And three, two, one, go. Sounds like there's hand claps in there too, kind of offbeat. There's that tambourine.
That was absolutely gorgeous. But there's a hole in my heart where it used to be. <laughs> that was a dagger to the heart, seriously. It don't come easy. And I knocked my coffee over. Cheers. However you want to look at it. That was awesome. I kind of wish I had flipped them and had that one play first. Because that would be a great warm up for that first track. But I guess you could also look at it like that was a good kind of um, bringing you back down to earth after listening to Photograph. Because um, I don't know if if that song doesn't affect you in some kind of way. I don't think you um, either. You, ha you don't have a lot of life experience or um, you don't have a soul. Um, that was absolutely stirring, um, and moving in so many ways. Um, I think he did the vocals for that as well. And I know he did it for the second track, the last one we just listened to. I don't know if he did it exactly all of them by himself for that one. So, all right. So for the second one, Ringo on vocals and drums, George Harrison on guitar, Gary Wright on piano, Klaus, v I'm not Klaus V on bass, um, Mal Evans on tambourine. I knew I heard a tambourine in there. And then Pete Ham and Tom Evans on backing vocals. Ken Scott was the engineer. And then if we go to photograph, Richard Starkey. What a name. Um, that was Ringo. Okay, on vocals and drums. George Harrison on 12-string acoustic and backing vocals. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Uh, Bobby Keys on tenor sax. Nicky Hopkins on piano. Vinny Poncia on acoustic guitar and backing vocals. Jimmy Calvert on acoustic guitar, Klaus V on bass guitar, Jim Keltner on drums, Lon Van Eaton on percussion, and Derek Van Eaton on percussion, and then Jack Nietzsche, or Nietzsche, orchestral and choral arrangements. They went all out for that song, and I see why it is uh, highly regarded and probably one of the best um, 
Beatles solo releases. That's what it said on there, and I was looking it up beforehand. Um, and I'm inclined to agree. That was an absolutely stellar track. And halfway through, it hit me. And um, it's crazy to kind of connect it to what's going on in my life right now. There's this one photo, and I've shown it to you guys. If you watch all the videos, I've shown it, uh, I think, like a day or two ago. Um, it's me and my friends all in the party house we lived at. Um, about circa 12 years ago, 2012 around this time, basically. And, um, and it's so true. Like, I know they're looking at it in a lot, like a lost love perspective in the song, but you can also interpret it, I guess, um, as lost relationships in general, just lost friendships. And I definitely felt that, uh, because I looked at that photograph. I've been looking at it a lot lately and I, I don't recognize the person I see because I've changed so much, you know, I've grown up, <laughs> but I also, I don't recognize any of those people and I, I'm probably never going to see most of those people again, probably 99%. Maybe there's one person now that whole group I'll ever see again in my life. But in the moment, they are the most important people in the world to me. Fast forward 12 years later, they're nothing but a, a footnote, a place in my memory, you know, that pops up sometimes during certain parts of the year. You know, it's so strange how our lives go and how we just store things, how our memories work. You know, we, because we remember everything technically, unless your brain doesn't register the memory like physically, but there, it's all up there. It's just not in your conscious mind. It's in your subconscious mind. It's where they store everything. And that's why the dreams are so vivid sometimes and things will trigger things and the deja vu. I think it all has to do with our subconscious and us being able to tap into our memories at will. It's just not in a conscious state. It's more of like an underlying, um, caverns of the mind sort of thing where like you know what's true but it's just a deep down sort of thing and i think that's true with, with a lot of things i think we all kind of do know the truth deep down but we just uh, obfuscate things and try to make this look like that and this and that you know just try to confuse ourselves we, like, we make things so complicated for no reason and um all i have to say i miss my friends a lot i miss my friends that were in that picture half of them are dead and not even counting all the other ones that weren't in that picture it's crazy. It's crazy what one photograph can trigger in a one in like a person's mind, you know, just one photo. And uh, like I said, that, that was more of like a lost love perspective. And it sounded like that's all he had left was the photograph, you know, and um, especially back then when photographs that weren't on your phone, you know, they weren't uh, on your iCloud. All you guys had was photographs, you know, technology is a boon and it's also a um catastrophic uh, attack i think on our just social fabric you know just communication in general but we have to live with it you have to change or or you can say adapt or die basically you got to get with the times man it sucks but this is how it is right um i definitely like the second one um i wish i had played it first like i said but um no matter what ringo just holds it down and his vocals man i love when he sings i know he didn't get to sing that much in the beatles like he did there's certain songs that he did of course um then they have a great they all had a great harmony together but he was great in that second track and i think klaus definitely shined in both tracks bobby key shined in the first track and Nicky hopkins shined in the second track um I guess there was two drummers and a bunch of extra percussion and like three acoustic guitar players in Photograph. And that's what made that huge backdrop of sound that they had going on there. I thought that was really cool. Um, I liked Photograph a lot more than the second one, but I still liked that second one a lot. So that means Photograph is definitely up there with like uh, Ramon, um, I guess uh, Cold Turkey, like from Lennon. Like there's some solo stuff that's some of my favorite songs by them. And this is definitely going up there. This is my favorite Ringo song, hands down. Um, but the only other one I've done is You're 16. And now this, you know, the other one too. So that was great. Hopefully y'all enjoyed that. Like this is for that random commenter who asked me a couple weeks ago to do Ringo stuff. So there you go, my friend. I hope you enjoyed. I absolutely love that. That, that first track is probably going to stick with me for a while. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I guess... Uh, that's what music's all about, finding those songs that will never leave you, and they'll just keep changing with you, you know? I think I'll leave you at that. See y'all later. And if you wanted to join our awesome, over, I think, 500 people, that's crazy. Wow, I just realized that. Um, 500 member community, uh, we'd love to have you. If you join the $15 tier or if you get one free request a month. But if you join any tier, you get access to all of our block videos, full album reactions, and our patrons only Discord server. There's also a PayPal link in the description if you want to send a tip or a request in that way. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.